In the previous lecture, we derived the formula for the total energy and formula for the average power. Now in this lecture, we will understand what are energy signals. This is one important topic in this course and we will try to understand how we can find out if the given signal is energy signal. A signal is said to be energy signal if and only if its total energy is equal to some finite value. So we can say that a signal is said to be energy signal if the total energy is finite. So this is the condition for a signal to be energy signal. Now what will happen? What will happen to the power because of this condition? The power is the average power which is normalized and we will understand what will happen to this normalized average power because of normalized total energy equal to some finite value. And for this I will take one example. In this example I will take signal xt and the signal xt is a finite duration signal. The signal xt is a finite duration signal like this 4 0 2 we already know the formula to calculate the total energy and you can see this signal is 0 from minus infinity to 0 and from 0 to 2 it is 4 and from 2 to infinity it is again equal to 0. So this signal is a finite duration signal and to calculate the total energy we will use the formula which is integration mod xt square dt the range of integration is from minus infinity to infinity. From minus infinity to zero, signal is equal to zero. From minus infinity to zero, signal is zero. From zero to two, signal is four. Mod of four will be same as four and the square will give us 16. Plus integration from two to infinity, signal is again equal to zero. So zero dt. In this way we will have 16 t the lower limit is 0 the upper limit is 2 so this will give us 32 joules so the total energy of signal xt is equal to 32 joules and it is a finite value so we can say that this signal given here is energy signal is energy signal now we will try to find out what will happen to the power of this signal if you remember the lecture in which we discussed the average value of finite duration signal, I told you the average value, the average value of finite duration signal is always equal to zero. So we are calculating the average power and the average power of a finite duration signal is also equal to zero. You can use the formula for the average power calculation but we will try to understand what will happen to the average power using the waveform. The average power, the average power is equal to the ratio of total power, ratio of total power over the total time. Total power you can calculate by integrating the instantaneous power with respect to time from minus infinity to infinity and then divide it by the total time. The total time duration is from minus infinity to infinity. So the total time is equal to infinity. When you integrate the instantaneous power with respect to t from minus infinity to infinity you will get finite value. So when you divide this finite value by infinity you will get average power equal to zero. If you compare this and this you will find the average power, the average power is equal to limit t tends to infinity the total energy over the total time because pt, pt the instantaneous power is equal to mod xt square so we have integration minus infinity to infinity mod xt square dt which is nothing but the total energy and we need to divide it by the total time and the time should be from minus infinity to infinity for which we will put the limit t tends to infinity in this way we will have this result so if you want you may write down this result 
But now we have the idea why power is going to be zero when energy is equal to some finite value. So here the power is equal to zero. There is one more way to understand why the power is equal to zero. I will explain that way also. Just consider this signal and you can have the mod xt square plot xt will be same as mod xt and when you square it you will have a waveform you will have a waveform like this in place of 4 you will have 16 and if you want to calculate the total value of mod xt square from minus infinity to infinity you can simply calculate this area and when you calculate this area you will have 16 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 32 and as we are calculating the average we will distribute 32 equally from minus infinity to infinity and in this condition also the average is going to be 0 because 32 is a very small quantity and when you distribute it equally from minus infinity to infinity it is going to be 0. So we have different ways to understand why power is equal to zero when energy is equal to finite and this is one important result that you must remember. We will use it a lot in the coming presentations. E is equal to finite. This implies P is equal to zero. Now we will talk about the properties of energy signals but before that I will let you know how we can check if the given signal is energy signal or not. For example, if signal x1t is given to you, then simply calculate the total energy of this signal. If the total energy is equal to some finite value, then there is no need to calculate the average power because when E is finite, this implies the average power is going to be zero. And as E is finite, signal x1t is energy signal. This will be more clear when we will solve few questions in the coming presentations. Now we will talk about the properties of energy signals. The first property is an important property. Energy signals are absolutely integrable signals. Energy signals are absolutely integrable signals this means if you integrate mod xt with respect to t from minus infinity to infinity you will get some finite value or you can say you will get some value which is less than infinity so this is what we mean by absolutely integrable signal and when we study Fourier transform, we will see the condition for the Fourier transform to exist. And the condition is related to this word absolutely integrable. If any signal is absolutely integrable, its Fourier transform always exists. This means energy signals will always have the Fourier transform. This is one important point. If you want, you can write this point. Now we will talk about the second property. The second property we have already derived. If you see the area of mod xt square, you will find it is equal to 32. And if you see the total energy, you will find it is also equal to 32. So we can say that we can say that the total energy of a signal is equal to the area under mod xt square graph. The total energy of a signal is equal to area under the mod xt square graph. This is the second property. The third property we have already derived. The average power is equal to limit t tends to infinity total energy over the total time. There are few more properties related to shifting, scaling and reversal which we will discuss after solving few questions related to energy signals. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section.